Some years back, I had a terrible backache. And I was invited, or rather I was sent to preach in the church. And I saw me sit down with care. Uh -uh. And I'll stand up with care. And I'll need to pray for people to heal, for, for healing. So when I stood up, violently, I put my hand this way. I said, backache, that's the window open. Go through that window now. And as soon as I finished saying it, I sat down properly like a child of a king. And suddenly the backache disappeared. How? The violent take it by force. Somebody is living here with healing this morning. Hi guys, this is the Maker Anthem, and it's quite true that gentleness is a fruit of the spirit. However, there are times where you're required to engage some level of violence to receive your desired miracle. In this message, God's servant Bishop David Abuye emphasizes this truth. Watch and be blessed. 12. The violent take it by force, which means the gentle lose at it. Gentle people always lose. Violent people always win. You need the violence of faith. If you like, call it the force of faith. Don't be a gentle believer. Anything goes. Any small things, you are down. Any little thing, your language has changed. The violent. Take it by force. Violence is synonymous to fight. Fight the good fight of faith so you can lay hold on what belongs to you. Satan will not allow you to take it without a fight. Help me tell you, but fight the good fight of faith. Why? So you can lay hold on eternal life. So you can lay hold on your health. You can lay hold on your advancement. You can lay hold on peace in your home. You can lay hold on redeeming back your children that the devil has stolen from you. On recovery of your businesses that is down. Fight the good fight of faith. Say loud amen. amen. Jesus came as a gentleman but also as a fighter. He was fighting the Pharisees and the Pharisees. He was fighting the people in high places. He didn't spare them. Paul was a fighter. He fought the man who stood on the way of the gospel. He struck him with blindness. If you don't fight, you can win. Enough is enough. Somebody say that with me. Enough is enough. enough. Say it again violently. Enough. enough is enough. Some years back, I had a terrible backache. And I was invited, or rather I was sent to preach in the church. And I saw me sit down with care. Uh -uh. And I'll stand up with care. And I'll need to pray for people to heal, for, for healing. So when I stood up, violently, I put my hand this way. I said, backache, that's the window open. Go through that window now. And as soon as I finished saying it, I sat down properly like a child of a king. And suddenly the backache disappeared. How? The violent take it by force. Somebody is living here with healing this morning. Somebody is living here with deliverance this morning. Somebody will take a miracle job this coming week. And above all, somebody will bring multitudes of souls to church next Sunday. The violence of faith. Look at the list of your converts and begin to violently call them in. Violently tell the devil, leave them alone. Violently. Violently. There are people who want to come, Satan is holding them, and you need to violently rescue them from the hand of the devil. Your faith will work for you this week. The paralytic man, God is healing by faith. They said there is no entrance. He said, what about the roof? Tear it open. If I don't have the money, I will take loan to repair it later. It's better for me to work and get money and get out of this sickness. Mark chapter 2 verse 5 to 8. 
Bartimaeus. He cried until he got attention. Mark 10, 46 to 52. The woman of Cana, chapter 15 of Matthew, 22, 23. Until her faith was acclaimed as great faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed. Despite her weakness, until she got her healing. Somebody is here this morning. You are One of the undoing of many believers is to keep thinking, I am not able. I'm not able. I've had members come sometimes and say, Pastor, please pray for me. You know you are closer to God than us. What an ignorance. There is no superiority or inferiority in the faith. What makes the difference is the understanding. That's why you have members who are more spiritual and anointed than pastors. Because they understood the authority. A number of times, God's servant has sent me to some places. And when I get there, they receive me the way they receive him. How? Not by my power, but by the authority he gave me. When I come to a place, I say, I am here representing him. Representing him, come and take the seat. That's authority. You didn't work for it, but it is conferred on you. It has nothing to do with your feeling. Stop feeling whether you have power or not. Jesus said, I give unto you power. That's what he said. He said so. Behold, I give unto you power. That's why when they came and returned, Peter was surprised. Uh -huh. Demon, go out and they live. Uh -huh. He said, Master, they were all subject to us in your name. <laughs> Jesus said, you don't know what I give to you. I will give you another one. I give you authority now. To tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every works of the devil and nothing shall by any means hurt you. so when you sleep at night sleep like one in authority don't pray demons i bind you don't come sleep and say all oh, the demons around here you are free to come the day they know you are speaking like that, they will not come. Because they now know the authority that you have. Listen, Satan always play on our ignorance. When I understood this, he said, you shall lay hand on the sick and the sick shall recover. So when I lay hand on the sick, I lay hand on them with the consciousness that they shall recover. He gave me authority to do so. You need to be conscious. You need to be conscious of the authority conferred on you by Jesus. Elijah understood it. They came to arrest him in 2 Kings chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 to 12. <laughs> uh, he said, If I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. It consumed 50 people at once. Second time, third time, they came begging him because they knew he had the authority. Jesus told his disciples, I give you unto your authority. And they went everywhere healing the sick. Peter understood this. He said, silver and gold I have none. But what I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. This authority is loaded in his name, in his blood among others so when you take the blood the blood of jesus you are saying the authority of jesus that's what you are doing be confident in the authority that jesus is. what are you believing god for have you ever believed god for anything for him such as lord give me 20 souls that's where it begins from kingdom driven Lord bless me in a way that I will be able to buy a bus for my zone so they can be coming to church kingdom driven kingdom driven your faith list what is number one there you can ask yourself one day our local church in my hometown sent to me we need boss for our church 
And I say, it's not in my budget. Anyway, I ask somebody to help me check where they sell balls to find out how much are they even selling it. He got there and they asked him, who wants the boss? Who wants to buy it? And as soon as he mentioned my name, ah, if it's for him, it's free. It's free. Kingdom driven. Kingdom driven. That should be your number one order of faith. The faith that is God glorifying. How did the faith of Elijah save a whole nation? He was full of passion and zeal for God. First Kings chapter 19 verses 10 and 14. I am jealous for God. The word jealous also means zealous for God. I'm zealous for God. In Second Kings chapter 10, uh, chapter 19 verse 10. Second Kings chapter 19 verse 10. A king said, come and see my zeal for God. Come and see my zeal for God. Come and see my zeal for God. You cannot be zealous for God and miss out in the product of faith. Faith naturally works in all areas of life for those who put God first in the operation of their faith. This is the last week, the 12th week, the 12th week of the prophetic weeks of harvest. What is your faith saying? What are you believing God to do by next Sunday? How many people are you believing God for to bring through you next Sunday? Put your faith on the line. For him. And you will not need to struggle for yourself. Our outreach team, my humble self and our team, we believe God for a particular number of people to be saved and be established in the church. After the ninth week, God made it happen for us. He made it happen for us. But we, we have kept going on, kept going on, kept going on until this 11th week. And we will continue the 12th week. How do you then think that God will not answer such individuals very quickly? God will surprise you this week. Yeah. Is somebody saying loud amen? Yeah. By next Sunday, Acts 13, 44 shall be reenacted again. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 4 shall be enacted again. There shall be massive ingathering of flocks of souls into this assembly. Vehicles will come, we'll be looking for space to park them. If you believe you'll be a part of making it happen.